the idea comes from the game Silent Hill. Oh, oh it's actually the movie. And then uh, the, 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 there's a movie called The Mist. And these these are like our where our ideas come from. So that's, that's one of my favorite why movies. We... <laughs> hey folks, this is Riker, and the Torchlight Infinite devs sent a crew to film me in my studio as I interview community manager Ian and try out the upcoming season Whispering Mist, which includes a new hero trait, Lightning Shadow Erica, and what I believe to be the single most requested feature I've seen for this game since beta. Ian, great to see you again. It's great to see you again, too. How you guys been over there in uh, Shanghai? We we're just busy preparing for the new season, and here it comes, Whispering Mist. Whispering Mist, lots of exciting stuff coming up here. Also, a mm. feature that has been requested since pre-day one. <laughs> Literally every time I talk about this game, uh, my, my, you get YouTube comments. Yeah. Is there co-op play yet? And do we have an answer to that now? Yeah, I believe the answer now is yes, we do have a co-op now. All right, well, let's dive right into some co-op gameplay here. Let's go ahead. How many people per party? Yeah, for now, it's, it's two players. We're planning on adding new multiplayer modes, also making more uh, players in the team. And how do drops work in multiplayer? There's a thing called distribution rule. There are like three types. So basically, the first one is all of the drops are like split. So like this drop is yours, then next one is mine, next one is yours, next one is mine. And there's also one thing called like uh, the leader has all the uh, the rights to like distribute what drops you want. So basically that means the leader has the, the, the right to collect all the stuff. So basically you're, you're giving players the choice of establishing on a party mm -hmm. basis how they want to do yep. loot uh, allocation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and oh, that actually reminds me of one more thing, is we are adding a uh, gifted system or a function oh. or feature next season. So basically that means you can give your friends whatever things that you can put in a trade house. But once you give it to your friends, your friends cannot put it on a trade house anymore. All right, so gifting system, then there's the, the, the trade house that's existed since uh, pretty much since the beginning, right? It's all in-game trade. You don't have to go to a third-party website, right? It's all easily sort. Uh, I, I love yeah. how easy it is to actually like, customize exactly the item that you're looking for with all the right affixes and everything, and you can just find that straight in there. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have to go through that, now you're you're looking at implementing gifting to just trade directly with uh, with your friends. And for the viewers, this is a, these are level 100 like maxed out or or really well built characters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like high level end game gameplay that we're seeing. This is what we want to strive to getting. You guys have been adding either a new hero or a new hero trait every season, is that right? In the past, we, I think we've done like one new hero plus one new hero trait each season, but now later on we realized it was actually a lot of work and we would actually spend more time reworking on the balancing of the older heroes. The speed is kind of slowing down just to spend more time to the balancing as well. Yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it, the, the amount of work to introduce mm -hmm. a new hero or even a new hero trait every time is, is enormous. And for our, our newer players who might not quite understand what a, a hero trait is, do uh, you want to explore a, a little bit that concept? Sure, so we have different heroes and each heroes have different traits. It might sound like a talent in other kind of games, but it's, it's more like different heroes. Yeah, and so basically every time a new season comes out, like people have new builds, new metas to come to and explore. There's always been uh, effectively at least one new build entirely, uh, for, be it from the new character or the new hero trait uh, from that hero. So that takes us to Lightning Shadow Erica. I, I always played Windstriker Erica. So how does Lightning Shadow yeah. work? Erica is, is our favorite heroes. So that's where it's, it's really exciting for us to actually um, building a new hero trait for her. So Lightning Shadow is basically based on the shock effect. That, um, so I th the, the core mechanic for this new hero is the electric shock applied to the enemy that also applied to Erica herself. This sound may sound like a debuff, but once this electric shock is also applied to Erica herself, you get a uh, like a buff to the uh, the self-made new hero traits that is called Cat Spirit Shadow. The time you apply shock to your enemy, you're also applying those shock to yourself, and that's why Cat 
like um, lightning shadow arc is, is kind of more uh, focused on you have to those build those lightning resistance because that's where the, the shock damage is coming from. So it's a little bit like when you when you rub your feet on a carpet and then you go <laughs> zap someone and you're zapping yourself a little bit too. Yeah. But <laughs> you're prepared for it, yeah, you're, exactly. you're, you're used to it, so it hurts them more than it hurts you. <laughs> Now, you guys are adding something with this update called activation mediums, which basically allow us to automate more skills now, right? Want to talk about how those came about? That idea actually comes from um, our first um, mid-season, I believe, no, sorry, a pre-season, because um, that pre-season has an affix that is permanent, which is you automatically, um, for every you know three or four meters traveled, you automatically triggers your main skill. And that actually make every single build's auto bomber. Uh, you're auto casting everything as long as you're moving. And that's why in this season, I was, we were thinking, the entire group was thinking, why we can't just make everything auto casting in the late game. Right, right. And so that actually caused a significant shakeup in the meta, right? Mm, because in the past, those skills that either has the most damage or has the best, you know, uh, we call it efficiency because you, like, you, you just run through maps and all monsters dies are most favorable. But now all skills can be the most favorable because you don't have to worry about how the efficiency works, mm -hmm. how you will manipulate the entire thing. But now only focus on whether you like this skill or not. You can just now focus on how to make your skill better. That's what we think we could, um, that's what we th think should be uh, at least good for our players. Yeah, so really interesting. Um, so so your your philosophy, going from season to season, when it comes to like making changes, mm -hmm. like how, how do you view the meta? How do you view, like, do you feel like we must change the meta every season? Or is it like you, you look and see, well, we see this is something that we feel problematic, so let's try to change it in that way. Um, to the meta, our philosophy is always like uh, we're looking at not only like whether this build is OP or not, we're looking at the um, percentage of players that are using the builds. But of course, like the most OP builds usually have the most percentage of people using it. That's 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 true. So we're trying to make balancing among all those builds. Um, one tricky uh, words is that if you make all the builds OP then it's still a way of balancing. That's one way we think how we should make the uh, the builds work. So our design philosophy for those meta skills is because is um, we want to make all those skills has their potential to be go through the entire game. I want we want we we hopefully that all skills have the potential to do that. And in the past, some of the skills OP skills are more um, user friendly. Like players can just click one button and then clears all the monsters in map. And for now, we're adding those activation medium, which allows all the skills to have the same ability to do so. But still, like there's some really fun mechanics, like the, the the snapshot mechanic. I believe most of the Thea players have is still working, and it's kind of like OP in the last two seasons. We're keeping those mechanics because those are like fun because players in the early game can have achieve a. a um, comparatively really high damage by uh, with a kind of lower cost and that's you know the fun of those mechanics and so when you guys are developing a new season are you still like targeting new players are you focusing more on veterans uh, how do you find like w w what mix uh, is, is the right balance for for the game yeah like uh, this season we made a lot of changes that is probably suitable for new players because as you know like we've um, kind of slightly decreased the, the length of the story. It's now three chapters instead of five from last season. And also the uh, nath nath room changes is now a lot easier because uh, we're making those cha choices or changes just to make new players a lot easier to actually get into the game, to, to learn the game, to get the fun of the game. So definitely new players is our one of the most important parts that we're looking at, but veteran players is still there because we have to guarantee that players are not bored or they're not getting repetitive gameplay season by season. And that's why we're making seasonal, you know, season gameplay, exclusive game gameplay to ensure that each season have provides a unique experience for our players. It's, it's just, it's always a blast to like come in at the start of a new season yeah. 
like the, the the power fantasy, like how fast you level, how fast you're like just killing a bunch of enemies, a bunch of monsters, like getting to that end game, it's so smooth. Like the progression of this game is so smooth. I, I could see how like for newer players less experienced, getting into that the once they're starting the end game, that it could feel a little bit of a grind. And it sounds like now you're alleviating that to make it even easier to onboard those players into mm -hmm. the end game uh, with the changes to the end game system. And then also, like this, this is something that I don't think any other game has done before. You're shortening the you said the the, the, the story campaign from five to, mm -hmm. to three chapters as well. And I guess that's yep. you're saying it's to get players to the onboard it to the end game faster. Yeah, right? Yep, just to let them know like the fun of this ARPG genre, the game overall is is the fun of grinding, you became stronger bit by bit, gear by gear, skills by skills, those are the, the fun that we try to prepare. And now I think uh, one change that I was seeing uh, comes in the form of rare monsters, right? It sounds like you guys mm -hmm. are reducing the number of rare monsters, but then making them more yep. challenging, perhaps with some some affixes or something that, that, that we'll, we'll get into here. Um, we saw mm -hmm. something similar in, in Path of Exile with their Arch Nemesis League, where they introduced these really tough, you know, uh, rare monsters early in the game, and it was causing a lot of friction uh, in the early levels of play. A lot of like players were, especially newer players, were, were tapping out. Do you have any concerns mm -hmm. uh, in that regard? And well, first off, how are you guys implementing these these tougher, rare monsters? And uh, yeah, do you have any concerns of, of seeing that same thing happen? Yeah, um, we believe in an RPG game, the right challenge difficulty is really important. We want our players to encounter, you know, clearing maps, you're enjoying yourself. Oh, there's a the real monster. You have now to pay attention to the new, you know, battle style and you will get a much better loot. Those excitement and achievement where you got after defeating those is, from our perspective, important to our players. And that's why we're, you know, buffing the um the real monsters existence we're making them better and now rarer just to you know emphasize on the the change that could happen during the uh the mapping experience and there's also mm -hmm. some changes being made to legendary gear right yep for those really really powerful well in in our internal testing we call it a tier legendary gears we create a lot of you know a uh, like a nerf version of those mm. just to provide the similar core affixes experience that you want but you can get a lot a lot easier so like in the past so in the new season you can use those kind of um nerfed version legendary gears as a like a um, transition to the uh, the late game so you, now it's not like from zero to one but it's more like a gradually come going up um process where you're gradually getting better and you don't have to worry about your core you cannot get your core legendary gears because now you have a nerfed version that's something that i see like people complaining about in other games is like oh like mm. i like this build doesn't work until i get this gear and they complain yeah. about how hard it is to get that gear so now you've, you've solved that by okay here's this young version it's not going to be as awesome as the mm -hmm. thing but it it allows you to at least run the build that you want to to, to run cool right and then you guys are introducing set items, is that right? Exactly, that's going back to helping our players going through Time Mark 7, which is, we believe is a milestone for those, uh, for Torchlight players. Now you have now reached the final end game of this, of this game. And set, is, set gears is now, really can help you smoothly go through Time mark one to time mark seven, but after that, you will still have to make you know, build your own, craft your own gear, find the best legendaries, and you know, gradually replace those set items with the uh, the final you know, best thing slots. I, I love what, what I'm hearing there. Like for years, I've talked mm -hmm. about like what my ideal version of set items, and I think that that's exactly what you guys have done. Or it's this transitional. You know, they're not the best things because when when yeah. you know, here, here's half your itemization slots where you have no choice everyone runs the same build in the end game because it's all sets mm -hmm. uh, but i really like i think sets are really cool like mechanically like here's a piece you know mm -hmm. gear that synergizes together it, it does a specific thing it has this flavor exactly. of fantasy um and I, I like it as a transitional step towards the end game you know for a new player it's like okay mm -hmm. i don't know how to make a build here's a set it's gonna get you through towards the the end but then you got to learn on your own and, and make something better 
So right. I, I look very much forward to, to trying out sets. Awesome. You want to try out the uh, the the, uh, the season exclusive gameplay? Absolutely. It's like it's it's actually one of those um, tries that we made because it's it's roguelike <gasps> for the the, uh, the season exclusive play. All right, let's walk us through the season theme. Mistville, is it? Uh, yeah, because um, this uh, we try to create this kind of you know atmosphere. The idea comes from the game called um, Silent Hill. Oh, oh it's actually the, the mood. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, the, the, there, there's a movie called The Mist, and these these are like our where our ideas come from. Those are really you know kind of scary. Also, the the feeling of you are surrounded by the fog is what we want to create and. Yeah, we love the mysterious and dangerous small town shroud in the mist. So that's, that's one of my favorite movies. We... <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That, that's that's. Oh my gosh! That's the so ending. Cool. That's why the we ending came is out. so haunting. My gosh! Yeah, it's it's, it's it. just you know me. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, and that's why we uh, create this season theme, and then uh, we also change our player's identity into a detective that oh. fits more with uh, the the Cthulhu the, the style related. And yeah, that's why you see all those tentacles around mm -hmm. and the, the the fog. Yeah, like I play so many like Cthulhu like board games and stuff where you have to manage mm -hmm. sanity and stuff. So I'm really excited by these. Yeah, yeah, by it's, it's like a board game, honestly. It's like a board game. Um, so the gameplay itself is like dungeon discovery and also roguelike elements in it. And so w my my purpose in exploring this here is so that I'm mm -hmm. like I'm trying to find um, I guess good the clock tower. Oh, I'm finding the clock tower. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and once you find the clock tower, you can now enter the next day mm. of this. Um... Oh, there's another one. <laughs> that that honestly, this is a really pretty unlucky run because <laughs> when I, while I was playing the game, I've never met so much bad omen still in like. <laughs> Floor one. That was that was kind of. It's it's my standard luck in all these games. I'm always like, oh, you get oh. cursed, you get cursed. You get this. Yeah. Oh, and I okay. Oh, the one. luck's turned around. Yeah. Double sanatorium. Yeah, here it comes. Um, that, that's what I'm saying because that's what usually like the first floor or the first day doesn't really cost you any rationale. It's more like you unlock everything and go through all of them, and you try to you know make yourself stronger in kind of early days so that you can have the. Uh, the ability to face those really hard days in the later on. All right, clock tower, and today's exploration. Oh, and now it's the the battle part. Oh. So you don't have mini maps here, ah. and you have to the, the 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 goal is different each time you enter this. There are like I believe, um, three to four goals where you have to finish. I, this one is, it's a tower defense. Oh. <laughs> Okay, it's we're basically just the waves of monsters coming towards you. You clear them all, you pass through this, and you have to go through this um, before the time runs out. And if if you did, you get you restore extra sanity on the uh. other day. And but if you're not, you just um, you know you just restore. I believe normal is twenty as well. Yeah, and now here comes another day. It's now day two. Day two. And day two, you're like costing, spending more sanity in this. Ah. And they can even buy old stuff. Yeah. Is there any limit to how much old stuff you can have? Mm, I don't think so. You can carry as much as you want. That's what roguelike games. That's why they're fun. Yeah. Because it's sometimes you just break the limits yeah. if you're lucky enough. This feels like the smarter, like long-term option to invest mm -hmm. into. Right. Um, right. Max Sandy is good. It's you know old stuff is always good. So yeah, just depends on what you know builds you're trying to do in this run, and that's basically the same as you know playing Torchlight. So what happens if I run out of rationale? Um, like this run is over. Oh, I'll explore a bit more just in case we, who knows what we'll find. Yeah. Oh, key legend. Ooh. Randomly obtain three to five old objects and obtain amnesia's, amnesia patient's key. You cannot gain any <laughs> more old stuff. Oh. Oh, that's like a really, really short term investment. <laughs> yeah, that's like, okay, I feel like my run is almost over. 
let me yolo it. Yeah, no, <laughs> let, let me see if it, we can do it. Yeah, I, th I think I'm not gonna go for that now. I think we're still... Oh, but that's pretty cool, honestly. It is cool. That's yeah. really cool. I mean, I guess yeah. we can do it just, oh. just for, mm -hmm. like, showing it yeah, off. Yeah, just for fun, definitely. All right. Yeah, sure, definitely. Cool. <laughs> four. Oh, so you have five, right? You got, One, like, two, five? three, four, four. We got the max roll, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we got the max roll. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we should yeah. discover more still. Like, yeah. <laughs> imagine we just pick up 5 old stuff and then lose, <laughs> and then in, lose. in day yeah. two. <laughs> it just... Oh, that gave me so much money. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, that also restores a lot of sanity. Right, up to 99 now. <laughs> Honestly, for this season gameplay, the, the fun part of it is, I think, it's, it's like a mixture of both battling and exploring. So... The better you are, the easier the uh, the fight will be. But also, you so that you only have to worry about getting the better oat stuff, the food, all the strategies. Look at that gold! Yes, <laughs> and oh, we're back. And you restore so much. Nice. You restore like thirty. <laughs> oh, it's day five. Don't let them know you remember. Ooh. All right. I think I'm gonna go straight to the clock tower now. Yep. Let's go. Find the portal. Scared. Oh, that's one. That's a. Not that hard one. <laughs> okay, so because the, the the portal shows on your mini map, you have to go up, and then you just run all the way towards the portal. Oh, there you go. That's the the portal. Oh, uh, on your on your bottom left. You... Ah, oh, gotcha. Nice. That's pretty close. Ah. <laughs> oh, easy. Let's see. Day. What day is it? Okay, that's day eight. Oh gosh. Uh -oh. All right. Another one. We're running very low. Uh, we got another one of these. Oh, nice. Okay, come on. Oh. 80. If we bump Zero up to 80, to we got a max roll. Oh, four. <laughs> <laughs> we got four. <laughs> Day nine. Ooh, 10 to 14. Oh, wait. I'm back to max rationale. Uh, I think that's because you gained too much code from investment. <laughs> you got like 500, right? Yeah. And then that turns out to be what? Um, a lot of fresh now. Yeah. A lot of, a lot. Nice. <laughs> My only concern is if we can survive the day. Like even if we're at full sanity, right. we still might like use it up before finding the uh, the clock tower. Okay. Oof. 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 If that is the clock tower, screwed. Oh, that's true. You want to reveal that for now? It's just because if that is the clock tower, and you spend way too much rationale on others, then you won't have enough to reach the, the clock tower. That's true. Do you want to guarantee that <laughs> you can go through this round, or do you want to die with thirteen with the with the one point three k gold? That's the thing. I think maybe I'll I'll check these two for the clock tower, and if it's not that, then I'll yeah. reveal the clock tower to see if it's that. Let's do it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you should have seen that. Oh, oh that's why. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one is easy too. You just Incarnation. Defeat a boss. Yeah. Day 9 or day 10? Day oh, 10. that's day 10. It's, 16 oh, it's 14 cost. to 16. Oh. We have 2,000 gold. <laughs> <laughs> that's so much. <laughs> uh, there Wait, is the clock tower. See? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Day eleven. Oh, it's twenty. It's twenty sanity. Oof. We can only discover nine cells. Whoa, that's so hard. Oh, well, let's preview the sanatoriums. Yikes. Oh, and it's far away. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, let's try. <laughs> At least we know there's something oh. we shouldn't touch. Oh, 80. <laughs> that's Ouch. so much. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll try this way. Yeah, I think so. Oh no, now what? This is the oh, can't no. use food. Oh boy. Uh, it's so uh, hard now. <laughs> I think um, we should gamble the, uh, the clock tower is right under the sanatorium below, on the right. Here? Otherwise it's, yeah, yeah. or left. That's our only chance, I think. All right. Yeah, we have like two chances. All right. That's one. Hopefully this one here. Oh. 
Oh, okay. What what is that? You don't know what will happen. A folklore of okay. dice. All right. Let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Obtain some coins. Yeah, that's what. Oh, but I'm gonna get sent wow. me back for coins. Oh, well, but not right. a whole lot, I guess. That's how much. Well, a hundred. Oh, all right. It gives you like what? Well, good, good. So now you have two chances. All right. Where do you want to try? Bottom right. I think bottom right. Or it's there. Let's oh. see. Yeah, it's oh, no. one, Okay. Oh, it's a barrier. Uh, it has to be this one or the one. No. No. Uh, well, it's a GG, I think. <laughs> we had a good run. For our first run, wow. Yeah, it was really good run because it's really hard to actually get to day this 11. far. Get to day 11. Yeah, with uh, no season talents on. Cool. That was fun. I look forward to doing more of this. How do you like the, the season gameplay so far? Uh, I, I really like it. Uh, again, this whole like roguelite yeah. thing, like I've been getting more and more into roguelites, and I think it's mm -hmm. like a, a really nice marriage in the ARPG genre. And I like the themes, yeah. like of course, like I'm really into horror and like Silent Hill and The Mist and all that, and <laughs> Lovecraft and stuff. So it's it's all stuff that really excites me. And uh, yeah, even though you know I lost, I still felt like I won along the <laughs> way because I, I had in mind, you know, it's yeah. a roguelite. You know, you're gonna lose at some point, yeah. but. Uh, yeah. You know, we made a lot of money. We did a lot of progress. So it was cool. Yeah, yeah. I look forward to trying out cool. what my next run's gonna be. And I think that's well, part of it. It's a replay value of like no two runs will ever be the same. Um, exactly. Which again, like in the ARPGs, having more of that end game, the uh, activities to do, where you're getting different experiences every time, and it's like, oh, am I gonna get lucky on my rolls? Am I not? It's like hitting upon all the things of uh, the, the RNG elements, but also agency. Like we get to make decisions. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, and, and it reminds me a lot, as well a lot of like the board games that we play. So very cool stuff. Yeah. So the, you were saying that the season talents would help with these, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So the bottom five is the one you can you know upgrade for now. Oh. See initial maximum sanity. Yeah, that's like you, the more you play, the stronger you will be. The easier the yeah the, the perfect the miss will be. That's mm -hmm. why I, I like. Uh, rogue lights more than rogue likes because mm -hmm. there is that you know even though you fail you're making progression mm -hmm. there's that meta progression you're, yeah. you're building up towards something greater you're still upgrading things so no run is ever a waste that's fantastic mm -hmm. all right so we went through a lot of content today a lot of exciting stuff to look forward to in the new season and when can we look forward to that um it's april 18 7 p.m pacific time and yeah we'll see you guys there I can't wait to jump in.